Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, we will review the key adaptations that have made Neosilicians so successful and long-lived. The first key adaptation is that they have an amphistelic or holostelic jaw arrangement with the incorporation of the hyomandibula and the serratohyal cartilage into the jaw joint. This enables the jaw to open much wider than if it was a single jaw joint between two bones. The jaw allows much larger bites into their prey. The second key adaptation is their many teeth called cladodont teeth, which are continuously replaced throughout the life of the shark. These teeth are also specialized for their position in the jaw. Isolated fossil shark te teeth can be identified by their position in the jaw as either anterior, intermediate, or lateral posterior teeth. Often the anterior teeth are elongated while the lateral posterior teeth are more flattened. Since the jaw is made out of cartilage, it's often isolated shark teeth that are found in the fossil record. The third key adaptation is the dermal denticles or placoid scales, which are found in shark skin. Now shark skin is covered in dentine. This is the same material found in teeth, which are very, very hard. These, uh, form these tiny hooks or barbs that make the skin very rough and prevent any predation on sharks, making them coated in armor. Now, shark skin can actually be used as sandpaper because of the hardness of these placoid scales. These scales are also found in the fossil record in microvertebrate sites. The fourth key adaptation is those male claspers and the use of internal fertilization. Now fish have to fertilize the eggs within the water and so the sperm and the egg has to contact happens outside of the body. While in sharks the sperm is delivered to the female through the injection of these claspers into her cloaca. The eggs are fertilized inside the body. Many Neosilicians also have live birth, or what is called yolk sac vivipravi, which live bearing larvae or baby sharks are nourished by a yolk sac, which is fully absorbed prior to the birth. Others actually release eggs, but they contain fairly developed embryos. The fifth adaptation is that the Neosilicians have larger brains than most fish and other prehistoric shark groups. These larger brains allow them to navigate the complexity of the ocean environment and hunt for prey. The final adaptation that made the Neosilicians successful is their adaptation for being really fast swimmers. Sharks feature very strong muscles and have very streamlined bodies. This allows them to be swift swimmers. All these adaptations have made the Neosilicians very successful. Today there are around 574 species living in the oceans and even some freshwater groups as well. The five groups of Neosilicians date back to the early Jurassic with a diversification during the late Jurassic, Cretaceous, and into the Cenozoic. However, today sharks and rays are in danger because of overfishing by humans, which reduces the prey that sharks can feed on in the world's oceans. In the next lecture, we'll look at the great diversity of bony fish that exploded into diversity and a wide variety of forms that evolved after the Devonian, especially in the Mesozoic. All right, for now, be sure to review the six key adaptations that made the Neosilicians so successful and long lived. Dun 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 dun. 
Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the description below.